Expect Penn State's backups to get in sooner rather than later and the starters to get some rest as the Nittany Lions will have no issues with Purdue. You are Locked On Nittany Lions, your daily podcast on the Penn State Nittany Lions. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thanks so much for making Locked On Nittany Lions your first listen and watch every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. My name is Zach Seiko. I'm your host of the show. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. You can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, and new customers can place just a $5 bet, and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win that first $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. This is my preview of Penn State versus Purdue. If you got a score prediction, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section and any key matchups that you are looking to. This is a game that Penn State should win handedly. Purdue doesn't have a lot to play for, and I'm going to give my prediction first and then back it all up. I have Penn State defeating Purdue 56-10. to So there, there's no question in my mind that Penn State wins this game I don't see this as a a trap game, a a potential upset at all. Penn State is just that much better of a team, and and Purdue is reeling. They they just don't have a lot to play for anymore at 1-8. But here are my thoughts on Penn State now, as they have the deck stacked in their favor. The the Nittany Lions control their own destiny here. This is a three-game stretch where they can get backups in, role players, true freshmen, get some inexperienced players, some experience. And then they can choose how aggressive they want to be in this game, but also this three-game stretch. So with Purdue, do you want to go really intense? Do you want to keep your starters out there for a majority of the game? How soon do you want to get your backups in? And that's my point. So if Penn State really wants to rest its starters, it it can do that. And I, I don't I just don't see Purdue offering that much resistance in this case. So Penn State is going to do just that. I think they're going to try to be aggressive early on, and I'll explain why. But they're also going to look to rest players and and get some freshmen and backups in as much playing time as they can. Penn State already made its statement. Penn State made that statement against Washington just a week ago. They don't have to prove anything. I think that chip on the shoulder, it kind of it's going to go away in this instance. That Ohio State loss, you know, student section ends up booing James Franklin, right? There's kind of a lot of this uh, uh there's a lot of this emotion that had been built up for Penn State and the season was never over after that Ohio State game. So hindsight is 2020 here, but I am not surprised that Penn State was actually able to rattle off that kind of win against Washington. So for them to look up, look to just absolutely blow Purdue out of the water, I don't know if it's going to be that kind of game for them. It's the fact that they are just that much more talented than the Boilermakers. They don't need to make a statement is my point here. Penn State doesn't have any weaknesses or mismatches going up against Purdue. There are a couple good players. I I will admit this. Purdue does have a decent offense, but their, their defense is absolutely abysmal. So that's why I have Penn State scoring 56 points in light of the fact that they are going to put some backups in as well. So watch Penn State to to let off the gas late too with Minnesota being a tougher opponent and a second consecutive road trip. I look for guys like Tizer Denmark and Luke Reynolds to get involved in the offense as those those freshman players that just need more experience. And then defensively, there's a lot of people that they could turn to. Defensive line, Max Granville, Jalen Harvey uh, on the edge. Anthony Specka could see some more playing time at linebacker, and that is key with your linebacker depth. See if you can get Specka situated. And then in the secondary, Antoine Belgrave Shorter, Kenny Wosley, John Mitchell. And that's not to speak for guys like Tamir Robinson is going to get in the game. And Odavian Collins in the secondary. Those guys are going to see an increase in playing time. But Penn State doesn't have to worry about redshirt eligibility with all of them here. There are three games left for anybody that has played one or fewer than that. So zero. If anybody is having to burn their redshirt. Just looking at Purdue overall. Team is abysmal. Team team is absolutely abysmal. And some people are starting to speculate, hey, maybe Ryan Walter should be fired here. 
It's only year two. I, I wouldn't go that far because I read a few reports that say, hey, the locker room is still bought in. This team is still behind Walters. Don't just give on it yet, give up on him yet. Inexperienced head coach. He was the defensive coordinator at Illinois for, for those that remember. But this is this is his second season. I know it's not gone well, but it's not like he is taking over a powerhouse of a football program. Purdue in itself has to rebuild as a football program with, with NIL and, and the transfer portal. So I am not surprised in the slightest that Walters is struggling with the Boilermakers. I would not move on after year two. That's my point. But what I do look at, okay, so reports say, recent reports say that, hey, the team's still bought in. The players are still playing as as, as tough as they can. Are they, though? Are, are, are they playing as tough as they can? Because when you watch the game tape, when you watch the footage, especially in that Oregon game, the Purdue players don't look locked in. They, they do not look like that they went, I, and I understand being down 28 to nothing, it's hard to kind of keep that mentality, but it looks like they have little to no motivation that they're just beaten down, the schedule has been too much for them, and, and that is the case. This is one of the toughest schedules that has been played in the country. Uh, Ohio, Oregon, then Ohio State, and now Penn State. I mean, that that is just brutal. Talk about a gauntlet here. Quarterbacks are actually good. They do have a quarterback dilemma, though. Who to start? Hudson Card is recovering from a concussion. He was a transfer, formerly played at Texas. And then Ryan Brown has impressed me. Redshirt freshman quarterback. Good mobility for a six foot four quarterback. Quarterback has not been the problem. I think it's everything else. Offensive line, wide receivers. They do have a good tight end. We'll talk about all of them individually. But when I look at this Purdue team, they have nothing to play for in this game. The basketball student section was issued a warning not to chant phrases that insult the team. The paint crew has to watch what it says. <laughs> I mean, that that really is something. I could see Purdue maybe playing a little angrily early on, just in light of everything, right? You have to issue a warning to the men's basketball fan club not to say anything in home games. But they just cannot keep up with Penn State. When you look at it, talent versus talent, Penn State has much more depth and much more skill than the Boilermakers do and a better coaching staff in that as well. So at, for from the Boilermakers, I, I guess you could say they would want to try to blow off some steam. Please do not click off the video or the episode, please, for, for saying that. But all, all puns aside, Purdue is just horrific. They a horrific season because of a horrific defense and horrific special teams at that as well. Credit where credit's due. The offense is doing what it can, but there is no complimentary football across the board. Because look at this. They took Illinois to overtime and lost by one point. They gave them a scare, 50-49 to 49 in that game. So it, the offense isn't the issue in this case. It, it is by far the defense. What I want to see from Penn State in this game, how much can you dominate Purdue? Or will you look past them? Because that Minnesota game poses a bigger challenge. Consecutive road game, tougher team, one of the better defenses in the country. I'd argue top 20 overall, just based on the eye test. A win is a win, but can you secure another decisive victory? Can you force turnovers? This Penn State defense, it's forcing turnovers periodically, but not enough for my liking. I would like to see against an inferior Purdue team to get two, maybe three turnovers in this game. And then which backups will play? How much will they play? And how soon will they play? Is this an Ethan Grunkmeyer game? I would love to see Ethan Grunkmeyer get some get some reps in the fourth quarter for at least at least if full would be nice, but you still want to get Bo Prabula his due reps. You don't just dump, jump Prabula to get to Grunkmeyer. So that's what I'm looking for from Penn State. Now coming up next, we'll talk about specific keys to victory for Penn State. There's not really a lot for Purdue here, and we'll talk about key matchups and players to watch in this one. That's coming up next here on Locked On Nittany Lions. And today's episode is brought to you by Roy. Hey, Nittany Lion fans, you need to download the Roy app. You have heard us talk about Roy this season and how they're revolutionizing the NIL industry because Roy allows you, the fan, to have a say in who gets the NIL money. And here's the best part about Roy. You get your money back if that player transfers. Roy is helping you keep your team intact, and it's actually good for the game. 
long term. You can show your support for your favorite players by depositing a little appreci appreciation into whatever player's account. To download the Roy app, you can see what the logo looks like if you're watching on YouTube or go to joinroy.com. Now let's spotlight the Roy Locked On Player of the Week, and I'm going with Abdul Carter. Two sacks against Washington, two sacks against Ohio State. He has been on a tear as of late. We're going to throw some money into his account on Roy. Every contribution counts. $10, $20, it doesn't matter. It all adds up and it's going to your favorite players and you can join me and supporting your favorite players by downloading the Roy app or go to joinroy.com today. You can use promo code locked on. Every athlete from every team is there. There's no purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. Go to joinroy.com for full terms. That's Roy. Support the players. Change the game. Keys to victory for Penn State offensively. Jump out to a lead and never look back. You never want to give Purdue any sliver of confidence. You don't want to let them stay in this game. A 7-10 to 10 point deficit isn't going to cut it. You want a similar first half to Washington where you go up 28 to nothing, and that's very possible here based on my score prediction. 28 to nothing is halfway there to that 56-point total in Penn State's case. Purdue has the worst defense, uh, one of the worst defenses in college football per PFF. They're ranked uh, in the power, defensive power rankings at 123rd. Penn State should have no problem scoring points in this game, whether it's Drew Aller, Bo Prabula, or honestly, even Ethan Grunkmeyer. I, I think Penn State, now here, here's what I wanted to point out and why I think Penn State is going to be uh, pre, because even Ohio State didn't score over 50 points against Purdue. I think Penn State has to rely on the passing game here and, and early in the game since they are limited at running back. Don't know what's going on with Nicholas Singleton. Is he going to play? Probably not. If he does play, I can't imagine that Penn State's going to give him a lot of snaps, especially when you do have a tougher matchup against Minnesota and the college football playoff to think about. It is more important to rest him. So if you just have Katron Allen and Corey Smith, those are really your only realistic. Tyler Holtzworth could probably play in this game, but I wouldn't chance it if you're Penn State. If you have Katron Allen and Corey Smith only because you need to be careful with Quentin Martin's redshirt status, Singleton is hurt, Cam Wallace is out indefinitely, you only have two running backs at your disposal in this case, but you got a plenty healthy passing game with Trey Wallace or Tyler Warren, Khalil Dinkins, right? Any of the tight ends, any of the wide receivers, Julian Fleming could have another receiving touchdown in this game. Rely on the passing game because the ground game is not at its strongest right now. And frankly, the pass, I mean, the pass blocking has been much better than the run blocking. So Penn State should, Drew Aller uh, might might have 300 yards in this game when, when, all, when all is said and done. Defensively, and especially because Purdue's defensive backs are weak, I, I look at this team similar to West Virginia secondary. Defensively, you can get organic pressure with four rushers. Uh, Purdue has allowed 24 sacks in nine games. Now, I will say be careful. if Mac, Whether it is Hudson Carter, Max Brown, both of these guys are mobile quarterbacks. Just be aware of that. Maybe use a quarterback spy here and there. But the key to victory is take away the ground game, take away the quarterback's ability to run, and get organic pressure. Don't, don't force yourself to use the blitz you shouldn't have to also if it is max brown try to confuse him he's a redshirt freshman try to confuse him defensively he does protect the ball well one interception in seven games played i i wonder what happens if he does throw multiple interceptions if he absolutely breaks down but like penn state and james franklin will not disclose injuries throughout the week uh Ryan Walters here is doing the same thing, saying he's keeping it a secret and that Penn State has to prepare for both Hudson Card and Ryan Brown. Let the Boilermakers beat themselves. I know I just pointed out how Brown has only one interception on the season at quarterback, but they still, they they just defeat themselves, especially on defense. Offensively, they don't make a lot of, they, they don't make egregious mistakes, if you will. But defensively, lapses in coverage, missing assignments, not getting home. Just let the Boilermakers defeat themselves at the end of the day. Overall, work in the freshmen. This is just a, a, a goal for the team. Work in the freshmen and backups as early as possible and jump out to, if possible, another 
28 to nothing lead and get them experience while resting your starters and beginning your prep for Minnesota. This is a look ahead spot and it's a look ahead spot for a reason. I'm not trying to dunk on Purdue, but it is hard not to look past this game when they are one and eight and they continually get blown out by comparable teams in Oregon and Ohio State. And when I say that, I Penn State is a playoff team. What do those other two teams have in common? Oh, they're both playoff teams. Produce keys to victory. Uh, really, there are none. Uh, play a perfect game. Like, I mean, an absolutely perfect game to pull off the upset of the century. I, I don't see it happening. It's a one in a million chance. Run fakes, trick plays, the kitchen sink at Penn State. What do you have to lose? What do you have to lose? Run run something that, that you don't typically run that is not on tape and see if you can catch Penn State and see if you can catch Penn State not paying attention here. Key matchups and, and players to watch for. Specific matchups. Abdul Carter. I think Abdul Carter could have uh, a, overall a complete game in the first half. If Abdul Carter has three sacks in the first half, that's kind of what I'm setting the threshold at. Two or three sacks in one half of play. I also want to see a bounce back game from Smith Vilbert and Amin Vanover versus Purdue's offensive tackles. Vilbert and Vanover have not been good the past few games. They, this is a bounce back game if I've ever seen one for those guys who are struggling. Produce defensive backs against Trey Wallace or any of Penn State's receivers, frankly. But I want to see Trey Wallace return to that bona fide number one status. It seems more of like a timeshare. You could even throw Amari Evans in here as well because he's gone absolutely radio silent here. Trey Wallace and Amari Evans versus Purdue's defensive backs. On Purdue's side of things offensively, Max Clare, the tight end, who's the leading wide receiver, or the leading pass catcher, I should say, with 32 receptions on this team against Penn State's linebackers and safeties. Does Jalen, I pointed this out against Washington, Penn State's defense did a good enough job, but this guy is truly one of the faces of this offense. Uh, so they're going to have to key in on him for Tom Allen and Penn State's defense. Tony Rojas, what kind of game is he going to have? He's, he has been struggling as of late as well. For Purdue's quarterbacks, Max Brown or Hudson Card uh, against Tom Allen, Penn State's defense overall. How are those guys going to respond? I don't think it's their fault. I think it's weak offensive line play mixed with game script, playing from behind, and the wide receiver's not helping you out. The wide receiver's not helping you out. And then Purdue's kicking game. There's a, a le an alleged rumor that they're going to change place kickers. They had a, a bad game against Ohio State, two missed field goals. So maybe Penn State gets a block or capitalizes on some field position to continue to build that lead. And just to go through key players, of course, we know Penn State has Drew Aller at quarterback. Bo Prevula will get in this game. Maybe even an Ethan Grunkmeyer. Katron Allen and Corey Smith are going to be the guys at running back. I don't expect Quentin Martin to play in this game with his red shirt at two games or at three games actually he's appeared in three games and then at wide receiver i named trey wallace there's tyler warren as another pass catcher of course amari evans julian fleming any of them i also don't expect caden saunders to get in this game as well we we shall see as he has been back at practice over on Purdue's side mentioned the quarterbacks quite a bit between Hudson card and Ryan Brown there is not a quarterback battle Hudson card is dealing with an injury in the ground game Devin Mockaby the leading rusher 104 carries 612 yards three touchdowns he's averaging almost six yards per carry this is why I say take away the ground game don't allow Purdue to have any semblance of control of the time of possession Reggie Love is also a complimentary back 73 carries 358 yards not as productive as a Mockaby but that's a solid one-two punch I think any other team in the Big Ten would definitely love to have that they're just playing from behind I've already given due praise to Max Clare, 32 catches, 475 yards, two receiving touchdowns. The wide receivers just let them down. They have uh, Jaron Tibbs, who has 21 catches, 232 yards, and two touchdowns. And then Jamal Edreen as that other pass catcher, 16 catches, 230 yards. And then your next leading receiver is Maccabi out of that running back spot. So it, it's just pretty abysmal for the options that Card or Brown have to throw to. Defensively for Purdue, the linebacker Jenkins comes in at second with 62. They get pass rushing pressure from Jenkins as well. Five and a half sacks. That leads the team. And just another player that a couple players that I want to highlight, actually. One player is Cole Brevard. And remember, he transferred away from Penn State. He is the starting nose tackle for this team. And then uh, true freshman, top, top 
50 player overall in the country, and that is Terrian Grant, who hasn't had the best season in the world, but he, he's playing early as a true freshman, getting a lot of playing time, uh, and just somebody, just a name to know and see if he'll stick around at Purdue, because I'm surprised they were even able to land him to be to begin with here. So those are the players really you need to know about on both Penn State and Purdue. We'll wrap things up with just some game info and injuries to look out for in this game that's coming up next after the break. And today's episode is also brought to you by FanDuel. Get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel. America's number one sports book because right now new customers can bet $5 and you will get $150 in bonus bets if you win. FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get that hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more. And it's all on the same page where you place your bets. You just got to visit FanDuel.com to join today. And let's look at those lines for Penn State versus Purdue. Penn State is a 28.5 point favorite on the spread, minus 10,000 on the money line. The total set at 50 and a half. If you're interested in betting on Purdue money line, it is plus 2,200. If you like those lines, you can bet them right now over at fanduel.com. And remember, you will get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. Again, that is FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Uh, Penn State's offense is that multiple system. They can run the ball 50 times that they need to with Andy Kotelnicki. They can pass the ball 50 times that they need to. I don't think they're going to go completely air intensive here. But do remember, I am expecting, because of their limits in the backfield right now, questionable with Nicholas Singleton, Cam Wallace is out indefinitely, Quentin Martin, you have to pay attention to his redshirt status. Penn State's realistic options are Katron Allen and Corey Smith. You need to try to protect them as much as you can until you have the luxury of getting Quentin Martin back, until Nicholas Singleton is 100%. I expect Penn State to pass more than they run early on. So the first half, a little more passing than expected, but once they build that lead, then try to run the clock and... and make sure the game is secure. Uh, Purdue's defense is a 3-4 defensive look. Penn State hasn't had any issues with, with defenses that don't run the traditional 4-3 defense, whether that is a USC or at, at Wisconsin. A Washington runs a 3-4 defense. Penn State has done very well against those respective opponents when those defensive looks are, are thrown at them. For Penn State's defense, we know that it's the 4-2-5. Purdue likes to run an air raid, interestingly enough. Penn State's defensive backs should have a nice day trying to cover Purdue's wide receivers. The focus should be on taking away Maccabi and the tight end, Claire. For game info, for anyone that's not aware, I think it's important still to talk about this. This is a 3.30 Eastern time kickoff on CBS. It's at ross -Aid Stadium, home to the Boilermakers in West Lafayette, Indiana. Penn State is a 28 and a half point favorite on the spread, minus 10,000 on the money line, and Purdue is tw plus 2,200. Total is 50 and a half. If you are going to the game, safe travels. Temperatures are going to be in the mid 50s with some light winds, and then it will cool down as the game progresses. The last time these two teams played was in 2022. Anybody remembers that one? That was that Thursday night game on Fox. Crazy to think, <laughs> think a Fox broadcast at night with uh, with Joel Klatt and Gus Johnson that ended 35 to 31 Penn State over Purdue. It was that go ahead touchdown late in the game, Sean Clifford to a wide open Keevon Lee. Oh, the things that uh, were supposed to happen and, and ultimately did not in that 22 and 2023 season. But there was a lot of promise in that game, just kind of remembering back to it. And Penn State is 10-0 in the last 10 times they've played against Purdue. Penn State's injured, questionable players of note. I still think it's important to include Deny Dennis Sutton, who has not been playing as much as a starting defensive end would, but he is progressing well with his groin injury. Nicholas Singleton, who's dealing with bumps and bruises. I think Anthony Donko, despite playing as of late, he has dealt with bumps and bruises throughout the season here. KJ Winston's out indefinitely. Caden Saunders back at practice, but I would still look, have him as questionable. Backup tight end Andrew Rapelier is out indefinitely. Zariah Fisher, we'll see if he returns this season. There's optimism, but we don't know if that is likely or unlikely. Keon Wiley was seen back at practice, the linebacker, so is he going to play sooner rather than later. Cam Wallace, as I've mentioned, is out indefinitely. As for Purdue's injuries, 
Purdue's actually pretty banged up as well. Uh, Lewis, defensive lineman, is questionable for, for Saturday. Markevious Brown, a defensive back, has been dismissed from the team. He was one of uh, Purdue's better players, actually. Joshua Sales Jr., an offensive lineman, is listed as questionable. Jamarius Dinkins, a defensive tackle, is listed as questionable. Uh, Mo Omanade, a defensive tackle. Back up to Cole Brevard, a former Penn State transfer at nose tackle, is listed as questionable. And then defensive back Ty Hudkins is questionable as well for the Boilermakers. So that will do it here. My final score prediction is 56 to 10, Penn State over Purdue. If you have a final score prediction, if there are some key players that you're looking forward to getting into this game for Penn State, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. I really appreciate each and every one of you for checking out this episode of Locked On Nittany Lions. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I'd really appreciate it if you left a like on this show. If you're not already, become an everydayer. Subscribe to Locked On Nittany Lions on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts for the latest conversations around your favorite Penn State sports teams.